most corporation council flats were built to replace the tenements because um, in the late 20s there was a disaster in Church Street. A few of the tenement houses collapsed and there was a lot of people killed and that sort of put awareness onto the way people were living in the tenements and how many people were actually living in one house and like whole families living in one room, like you're talking about 12, 14 people living in one room and in the tenements there was mostly eight rooms so you had like a lot of people living in one house and when the Church Street disaster happened the council sort of decided then, maybe I'm wrong but this is more or less, to clear the slums of Dublin and put people into houses in the outskirts and build flats for people that wanted to stay in the city. So most people that moved into the flats would have come from the surrounding area, from tenement houses that were being knocked down. They were luxury to people then because they actually had running water and they had a toilet where in the tenement houses if you lived up the top you'd have to go down 12 flights of stairs to use the loo and get water and drag the water back up the stairs. Some of the tenement houses on every second landing had a sink, not most of them, most of them were down in the back garden. So Oliver Bond when it was built would have been complete luxury to the families that moved in. The kids would have had bedrooms, the parents would have had a bedroom and they had a kitchen and a sitting room and a toilet. They had no washing facilities. There was no, there was baths in the kitchen beside your cooker and that was your washing facilities. Gradually, as people, the years moved on, people took the baths out. So you had absolutely no washing facilities at all. A kitchen sink or the ivy bath. Every child that lives in Oliver Bond is a brilliant swimmer because they went to the ivy bath every Saturday for a wash. We walked, you know what I mean? But we walked in manual jobs that the wages wasn't good. We existed on the wages that we had. Like my husband worked in the corporation and I worked in the Richmond Hospital. But we did walk, you know what I mean? But the wages actually, my husband's wages at the time, if he had been on the labour with six kids, he would have got more money on the labour than actually working. Plus I had no medical card, I had no, not only me, there was a lot of us the same, we'd no medical cards, we'd no um, going back to school allowances because their husbands had the name of work. sewing machine, the sewing machine, a girl's the best friend. If I didn't have my sewing machine, I'd have come to no good end. But a bob and a bob and a pedal, a pedal and wheel, the wheel by day. So by night I feel so weary that I never get up to play. Oh, the sewing machine, the sewing machine, a friend in need. If I didn't have my sewing machine, a wicked life I'd lead. But a bob and a bob and a pedal, a pedal and dream about the romance. So by night I feel so weary that I never get up to dance. Oh, the sewing machine, the sewing machine, my pride and joy. If I didn't have my sewing machine, I'd have married James McCoy. But I bob and a bob and a pedal, a pedal and that's the end of Jim. Cause by night I get so weary I don't even look up to him. A boss, he looks like a horse, his name's Joe Goit. I'm willing to bet the wages I get, that face of his must hoit. While I'm bobbing and bobbing and pedal, the pedal he keeps his eyes on me. Oh, I've never had a nightmare where...